Coming up, we are going to review one of the worst places we've ever eaten at at Universal Orlando Resort. We're eating at Blondie's in Toon Lagoon on this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig. Joining me today is my co-host, Rhino. He's behind the camera right now. And as I said, we're eating at Blondie's. This is going to be a mistake, but we have to start re-reviewing some of the quick service restaurants we haven't been to in years, and this is one of them. And as I said, it was the worst of any of the quick service restaurants we've eaten at at Universal. I know a comic strip cafe just down the way was also one of the worst ones. That was where we had the uh, the Asian inspired food that I believe tasted like cigarettes. Uh, but then we went back for the ramen and it wasn't that bad. I don't remember it even. Either way, I know that this place was awful. It was just downright horrible. So maybe it's gotten better, maybe it's gotten worse. We'll have to find out. Before we get going though, I wanna remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content, you wanna support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Go ahead, go to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com right now, get a free, no obligation quote. And for us, well, we're gonna go see if we're making a huge mistake. It's time for Blondies. We did it. We got our famous, not our famous, the famous Dagwood sandwich. I'm reading the menu that says our famous, but um, this is a fresh baked onion and poppy seed bread piled high with baked ham, turkey, roast beef, American and Swiss cheese topped with lettuce, tomatoes, mayonnaise, and mustard. And I'm not gonna lie to you, the, um, the like, uh, the menu photo, like the, the glamour photo of this sandwich doesn't really do it any favors either. Honestly, I actually think the slice of this sandwich that we got is better than the one pictured here. And I think it looks better than it did last time. I can't remember. I'm gonna cut it right in half, right down the middle, right down the, the thick way, um, cause I, can't, I don't think I could humanly cut it the other way in half. It would be absurd. It'd be like cutting a, um, a Pizza Hut breadstick down the middle. But here's a here's a cross section. I don't really see I don't really see the mustard in here, baby. Oh, did it say mustard? No, it said mayonnaise. Oh no, it says mayonnaise and mustard. Maybe it said it's available to put on there. I don't even see the mayonnaise on here. I don't know where the no. It just says. Uh, topped with lettuce, tomatoes, mayonnaise, and mustard. So I'm gonna give it a naked bite and then I'm gonna add, I got mustard because I assumed it was all on here, but no. So I can taste the onion and the poppy seed on the sandwich. The bottom of this sandwich is definitely a little, we're bordering on wet, but we're not there yet. Um, and the vibe I'm getting from this is a vending machine sandwich. So I am gonna definitely add Mustard, because I don't taste mustard or mayonnaise, so maybe the gentleman who made the sandwich forgot. But shout out to uh, Tammy Sue, who was at the register. She's a big, big fan of ours, big uh, hype person. She was very nice. So I'm trying to be very nice about everything. The tomato that's in the top layer is like, you know when the tomato starts to dissolve after it's been cut and it gets to be like mushy? That's where we're at texture-wise, so I'm having a, a little trouble with that. Otherwise, this is literally just a, sorry, just a sad sandwich. 
When we last reviewed this place, I did not get a Dagwood or any sandwich in particular unless you consider a hot dog a sandwich, in which case I got a hot dog sandwich. So this is my first time officially reviewing the Dagwood and you know what? Just on the onset of it, I'll give it a little bit of a, give it a little bit of credit. The bread is extremely fresh. There might be a moisture issue with the bread the rhino was mentioning once I start biting into it, but you know the it's a spongy piece of bread here. Like I've got I've got to at least uh, think that they're doing something right with that, but maybe they're doing something wrong with the rest of it. The American cheese that's on this just looks so incredibly processed and fake. I know it's fake cheese anyways, but like it just looks so gross on here. I'm, I, I don't know where I'm going with that. It's just, it looks gross on here. Okay, my first bite. Rhino is correct. There is no mayonnaise or mustard inside the sandwich. So I believe it's mostly a situation where they're like, hey, we provide these condiments. Why don't you put them on yourself? Depending on how much mayonnaise you would like or how much mustard you like. And that's fine, I guess, you know? If I wasn't a fan of mustard or mayonnaise, I'd probably be a little bit annoyed by the fact that it's already on here in a quantity that I don't consider to be the right amount. That being said, the sandwich is very wet as it is between the tomatoes, that thin, thin iceberg lettuce, and then the meats itself. It's a wet sandwich, so mayonnaise or mustard is only gonna stand to make it more wet. The cheese is definitely the worst part for me. It's like kind of had that same flavor as like a Lunchables cheese and just really is gross. The meat is higher quality than a Lunchable sandwich, but the cheese is just downright awful. Mayonnaise would definitely fix up this sandwich. Unfortunately, it's the one thing we didn't grab because again, Rhino thought it was already on the sandwich. I might have to go inside and grab some, but I'll give it one more bite here. I flipped the bread upside down for this bite, so that way I got a little bit more of the onion flavor from it. That was a nice plus. Really like the bread. Huge fan of the bread. Really big fan of the bread. Uh, I definitely need something for this sandwich, so now I just have to decide, am I too lazy to go inside and get mayonnaise? Do I settle with the mustard that Rhino has out here? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe this. Maybe I take the pickle that comes with it. Rhino ate the other half of the pickle. I don't remember if he talked about eating it. I don't, I don't it's a dill pickle, it doesn't matter. I could always put that on and that'll add a little bit of, you know, acidity to it. There's also the olive that held the dagwood together. Something about this olive feels like it comes from a cartoon world, which is very fitting for Toon Lagoon. Oh God, gross. It's on the warm side, it's a warm olive. So I'm gonna make my final decision on what condiments I'm gonna put on here. And in the meantime, I'll let Rhino wrap up with his thoughts and feelings about his second ever Dagwood. I think it's gonna be bad. I feel like in my mind, this round of the Dagwood doesn't seem as offensively bad as it was the first time. Um, I definitely get what Craig was talking about with the Lunchable cheese sort of a thing. It's definitely that plastic cheese um, kind of feeling to it. Um, it's okay. I, it, it's not worth uh, the price of it, which I don't think we talked about yet, but I know Craig will. Um, in the wrap-up, um, I think it comes out to somewhere around like $12 with an annual pass discount. So there's so many other things in and around here that you could try. And I get it. Sometimes it's a lot. You've been at a theme park for a while. You just want a sandwich. I've been there. Um, this ain't it. There's a bread box outside at CityWalk. Get a sandwich there for like the same price maybe? Maybe a couple bucks more, but it, you'll get like a side with it and everything like that, and it's definitely a better experience. So I I think this would be like my absolute last uh, like choice anywhere in terms of like park food. Like I'd maybe take this, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I can't say, sorry, I keep banging the table. I can't, I can't, uh, it's just the sandwich is sending me into a craze. Um, 
I can't weigh in on it being like I don't remember the last time I had a Universal Burger because I'm not a big burger person. But yeah, I, you're in a, you're in Universal Studios. You're in Islands of Adventure. You're at Universal Orlando Resort. There are so many more options to go to and try than this. Like I, even in terms of just like a burger, chicken nuggets, something like that. I I just I feel like this would be real low on the list. I don't think you're really getting anything worth the amount of money that you're paying for. So. No matter what I say about the sandwich, that's where I 100% feel is true. I had five guys, uh, not five guys, I had um, firehouse subs for lunch and it was about the same price and that came with a pickle too and that was a lot of meat and that was fresh bread and I loved it. This is, this is, this is, this ain't it. Ultimately, I was way too lazy to get up and get mayonnaise so I just had to settle with the mustard that was at the table. And it was good from the standpoint of I just ate mostly mustard and under it was the taste of high sodium, uh, probably high preservative lunch meat. And I would have to agree 100% with Rhino. Why in your right mind would you get any sort of sandwich from here when you could just go out to Breadbox and get something that is significantly better? And like, I understand if you're trapped all the way back here, maybe you're like, oh, to walk all the way to the front of the park, is that really worth it? It absolutely is. Uh, it's really not that far. In terms of what else is available here, uh, you know, it's mostly what's on this sandwich. You have baked ham, smoked turkey, roast beef, and then a tuna salad. All of these sandwiches that are made to order are $11.49. And as they are made to order, you can choose what toppings you want, what bread you want on it. Uh, then it will come with a side of potato salad. You can add chips on for $3. Uh, there's also coleslaw you can add on for $2.19. You can get potato salad as a second side for $2.49 if you want. You have lots of options. The famous Dagwood sandwich itself is $11.69. After our annual pass discount, it was $10.59. Absolutely not worth it at all, even a little bit. Outside of like, you know, Rhino talked about Firehouse. Literally, leave the park, go to the closest Publix and get a pub sub. Uh, there's, uh, you know what, the guy, uh, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. There's like I'm trying to think of all the different sandwich shops that are in the vicinity around here and there's so many. Go to any one of those and sacrifice your park time if you really want a sandwich. If you want a hot dog while you're here, excuse me one second as I lift myself up. A foot long is eleven ninety nine, a chili dog is twelve forty nine. And a Chicago dog is $13.99, and all of those come with crinkle cut fries. So I feel like if you're gonna eat anything here, get a hot dog. Might be the better choice than the sandwich. The sandwich is just awful. I'm not, I, Rhino might wanna like be a little bit nicer about it. It's just not good. I, I hope we don't review this again for another six years, if not longer. Uh, it's atrocious if this whole Blondie's establishment goes away. I would not be upset by it, uh, potentially at this point. I would even say like the only redeemable thing about this restaurant is maybe you are a fan of Blondie's and so you're like, well, oh, might as well eat there. So that's the only way I can recommend it. Otherwise, stay away from here, go to Breadbox, go anywhere else, get something crazy. You're on vacation. Sandwiches, you can have them at home all you want. But I believe that's going to do it for this dining review. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you want to support us more, of course, you can always book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, questions, video suggestions in the comments section. Uh, if you are listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you can leave us a rating and review, that would mean a lot. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Biz Unplugged Universal Edition. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again real soon with another episode. But until then, remember, we still haven't changed the name.